£130,000 for the charity and helped deliver tonnes of food and supplies to those displaced by the war. And guess what? He's only here right now. I'm honoured to be joined by Nick Tad. Nick, thank you very, very much. Firstly, you're an absolute, absolute national treasure. Um, I suppose, what made you want to do this, you know? Um, yeah, good question. Um, it was just, at the start of the war, really. It was, um, we all watched it unfold. And, and I just thought to myself, look, I've got some time. Um, I've got a couple of quid in the pocket. I'll just go over there and just do whatever I can, really. Um, that was in the beginning of March, and I'm pretty much still here. I mean, I do come home periodically um, and then fly back out again, but the harsh reality is that they, the people over here need, they need the world behind them, um, and that's the truth. They actually do need the world behind them. I, I did some interviews this morning with, um, a couple of ladies who had their bombs, houses bombed from underneath them. Um, and they're just so appreciative of the fact that the world is watching and hasn't given up on them. Um, and that really motivates you to keep going. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, I was just looking at some of those images there that we were playing over the top of what you were saying. And it's, it's tragic stuff. And I think, look... The people are always helpless in war, of course. Innocent civilians are as well. And it's sometimes often forgotten that so are animals, so are pets. And, and in a way, they're more helpless, aren't they? Because humans at least know what's going on for a start, I suppose, and can at least maybe try to get to safety or try to sort themselves out or something. Whereas, you know, cats and dogs and, and, and other pets just, oh, they just, they, they mustn't have a clue what's going on, mustn't they? But, I mean, how have you felt being over there and seeing it firsthand? We'll, we'll do the human perspective second. Let's do the animal perspective first. How bad is it for the animals over there in Ukraine at the minute? I suppose being an animal lover is a good question, but I suppose being an animal lover first and foremost, um, it's quite, it's hurtful. It really is quite hurtful to see them in so much pain. Um, in the early days of the war, I was working more over on the, the western side of Ukraine, around Lviv and stuff like that. We were picking up animals there that had been left tied to a train station um, where, or a bus station where they'd come across the country yeah. Um, but then the, the bus drivers or the train drivers weren't allowing them on the trains to go across. And so they literally got left tied to a lamppost. Um, and of course, these are, these are, these are homed pets. These are, these are not street dogs. So these are the most savviest of street dogs. And the stress in them was immense. I mean, PTSD, I think, is the correct terminology here. But as, as we've gone more uh, to the east, and I'm in the east as we speak, um, yesterday we are in some small villages that have just been well, essentially demilitarized, and we're still coming across, still coming across dogs and indeed cats, but mainly dogs that have just been left in a house. Um, so one, of, one of them has been left in a cage. It's a huge dog, been left in a cage, and, and there was a, there was a, his neighbor has been feeding it, but he's, he's been too frightened to go in there and get it because it's such a huge dog. Mm. Um, yeah. So we're still seeing, you know, four months on, we're still seeing animals being left tied to, to a title house or a cage. It's, it's terrible. 